Welcome back to Robert Lowe, where I show you the ins and out of graphic design as it pertains to t-shirts, logos, and GIF animations. And today, people today, I want to go ahead and put together this logo that I was putting together for the last uh, upload that I did. Basically, what I want to do is just animate this. And I mean, it's nothing to do with animated logo, but the challenge today is to pretty much perform this task on my iPad. So if you remember in, I, I think it was my update video, I said that I bought an iPad and I was gonna show you guys how to do some things on it. But before I did that on Procreate, I wanted to test out, I guess this another kind of little app or whatnot. And this app is called AstroPad. So what AstroPad does is it's pretty much broadcasting everything from MacBook Pro onto my iPad. And I was told that this is kind of the best way to do things on Photoshop and Illustrator is from the iPad. I mean, it gives you kind of like that drawing tablet feeling i guess you can say and i mean i'm not gonna lie it's really responsive okay so now that i got this finger what i have my challenge here today is i want to progressively so what i want to do is i want to progressively move it from this back down to like a fist so starting from a fist so starting from a fist i want to go up like this you know and just kind of animate it like that because like i said before this logo this logo mark is pretty much what people are going to identify with so yeah they're going to see like the letters and stuff like that but i also want them to be able to replicate the stuff like maybe if they're in class or maybe if they're you know just hanging out somewhere and somebody throws up something like this or whatnot and it just means you but it's turned around like this so um when people do it or people do it like this they'll automatically think about the brand you know so I want it to be something where it's kind of realistic and just get the feel, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that, but I'm gonna have to, I guess, zoom in some real quick and then go from there. So I have this on a separate layer and I want to basically, I want to bring down these top parts of the hand. So I'm gonna make a duplicate copy and then I'm going to just kind of drag it down some like this. So as you can see, the top of the finger here is making like a knuckle, okay? So I'm going to, on this layer, layer one, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of make a circle using the lip tool to just kind of make a circle that takes out that portion. Put it on a mask and then invert the mask using Command I. All right, and I think I might have took too much out, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and use this move tool, just kind of bring it back up and then move it over like that. And then I'm gonna use a paintbrush. So I'm not, so you can, you guys can see I'm not used to using this pad yet. So I'm gonna get there, but right now, that's a fact, because all of my tools are on the left hand, so I'm just gonna move this over over here to the right and clip it over here like that. I think that would make a difference for me. So I'll use white right here just to kind of fill in that spot that got lost. And I'll Command Z. There's no way to Command Z or zoom in. Well, there's a zoom in tool, but... And yeah, that gives me an accurate depiction of what I'm trying to do. So I kind of want to get these lines from the fingers out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on a layer mask with a brush and just kind of brush this out. This is a hard challenge because like I said, I've n I have never used a pad like this. Like I've used drawing tablets, but I never used an actual tablet as a, uh, as a mean of drawing, you know? So it's, it's hard, I guess you can say in some aspects, but I mean, a lot of people has been using, you know, tablets like this before. So it's not really something that's too bad or, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just maybe because I'm new to it and I haven't really gotten the use of it. Like I just figured out how to scroll, you know? So being this primitive, you know, brings you back to like the beginning stages of like Photoshop and stuff like that, because I haven't used like a tablet. I would always use my mouse and just kind of like scroll up, you know, using the mouse. But like I just discovered the scrolling tool or not the scrolling tool, but the, uh, the scroll bars over here like this. And I never really, never really paid attention to it like that. So it really shows you like how much we, we rely on like different tools to do things or the mouse pad to do things or you know but um 
it's kind of awesome so i have this going it's kind of making like a not so great knuckle so i'm gonna have to go ahead and get a little bit more into this right here with the uh with the brush so let me just brush out this here very interesting you know and then from there i think that looks pretty good i'm gonna go ahead and use the zoom tool to kind of move in real quick all right so yeah that looks pretty cool right there so what i'm gonna do is make a copy so command j and then with this i'm gonna zoom out some and i'm going to move this one over like so well let me group these together real quick so you guys can see yeah so as you can see it'll do something like that i just need to get like the innards in and i need to fix this shape right here i'm not 100 percent sure if i should keep in this knuckle that i made for this little side right here so uh, i'm probably gonna go in and instant and intensively fix that so not that one but this one right here and then kind of like command t it over without destroying it because it's really it's really easy to destroy pixels in a uh, photoshop and stuff will look pretty bad um from here so yeah i think this is cool right here let me zoom in real quick like i said it's really easy to destroy pixels here and like it's starting to happen now but i think i can kind of fix this part right here and then i'm gonna go ahead and fix this real quick so on this layer mask right here i'm gonna take a brush and just kind of brush that out i'm not 100 percent sure if you guys can see my cursor but I'm just going to show you like this right here doesn't look consistent to these right here. So I have to go in and kind of like make that happen because this straight edge, this is a straight edge. Well, not really straight edge, but compared to these rounded edges right here, that's just not going to work out. So I have to do something about that. And the way what I'm going to do is I'm thinking about just actually just making a circle and just putting it in there so i'm gonna try a few different things but uh if one comes out better than the other if one comes out better than the other then i'll just go from there i'm trying to do all of this on the ipad you guys i wish i could show you i have the camera set up like right behind me but i wish i can show you like exactly what i'm trying to do here <laughs> because it's awesome on my ipad if you guys can see it yeah see so it's okay let me command z i might be able to make that a little bit better if i went maybe 20 pixels i will see what 23 does hundred percent not sure if i like that so i'm gonna drop this back down to maybe 10 pixels and just kind of try to fill it in maybe six will be okay let's see and if i zoom out yeah that looks that looks okay it's not bad it's not too good it's just in its art I don't think it's gonna work out too well after a while but I'm gonna go ahead and make all of this into a group and I want to flash this one into that okay so we have that and I'm gonna actually move these over so let me move this over from here into its own little spot so in reality this wouldn't be a thing so I actually have to go in and make a knuckle for that thumb as well so i think what i'm going to do what i'm going to do is just take that same knuckle and then kind of i guess skew it down um, and then go from there because i feel like if i can get that out if i can get that one little small portion out it should be okay like we'll have a fist and then we'll build it up from there so it's only going to be I, I think one more frame so we have one more frame after this. So I'm going to make the knuckle for that thumb and then we'll make another frame and that should be good. And then we'll be able to build into the, uh, we'll be able to build up the, uh, the actual animation afterwards. So I have to go in and I want to command J this, this group, and I want to bring this over here. And I kind of want to turn off this one i'll just bring it back over like this like so and i'm gonna go into this group back into that knuckle group or whatnot and then kind of 
make one more copy of it. Command J that. Uh, I think this was the body. On the body layer, I'm gonna take this brush, kind of brush out this thumb real quick. Just enough so I can still have like a joint to, to kind of like make that happen. And I think this was the extra one I made. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this, move it down like here, like so. I'm gonna transform it, kind of like turn it into a way where it makes a thumb joint. And I'll, I guess, skew it up a little bit. So like that. And then once again, uh, see, I gotta go over here and fix this bottom part because I didn't get that yet. So um, with the, whoop, messing up, sorry about that. So with the brush, I'm gonna have to brush away this part right here. So um, let me get that gone for you guys. So as you can see, it's making that transition that I want to happen. Um, so it's a full fist at this point in time. I need to go in and kind of like make this part Ooh, what is that I need to fix that too I need to go in and make this part right here so that's kind of nothing we just kind of figured that out which is just kind of like placing a dot about right here and that's pretty much it so it made it I made the fist and the fist is pretty much ready to go into his animation state all I need to do is just make the next frame which is what I've copied over so I'll call this one frame one or frame. Yeah, frame one. We'll turn this into a group as well. Uh, and we'll name this frame two or well, frame three. So that's frame three. We got frame one and frame three. So now we got to make frame two, which is just pretty much a hybrid of both of them. So basically what I want to do to get this transition going is I want to just make sure that these two knuckles right here extend outward okay so they need to come outward just a little bit and this knuckle here needs to go a little bit towards the left this is pretty much transformation so I actually have to just pull it up some so it's gonna it's kind of a challenge but it's not really and I'm gonna show you guys why so let me go ahead and turn this one off and I'm going to move frame one down and delete this group because I don't need that no more and I can command J this frame one group to make frame two cut well frame one copy and then I'm gonna go in and I think this one was the knuckle well let me turn off frame one that one was the knuckle for the thumb that one and that one so I have those off and because I have those off what I can do is I can take the paintbrush from for layer one down there. I know I, I have this all messed up, but I can just kind of paint those back in up to a point like this right here. I got to get rid of that little small point too. And then I can transform what I have back into the picture. So. It's a little bit of manipulation when you think about it, but just it's just a little bit of manipulation. So it's not like a lot of full out. You're not going to understand this. This is actually pretty easy. But um, yeah, like I said, it just takes a little while. So I'm going to take those two points out and then I'm going to turn back on all of these knuckles. And basically now all I have to do is just kind of oops, drag it up with the with the move tool. So this one comes okay well that one comes like right here I need to transform it down so let me kind of like make it smaller we'll have that transition so it's so hard not to use the keyboard you guys like I'm so accustomed to using the keyboard that it's kind of like I'm looking for it you know but I'm trying to use the iPad a little bit more I have Photoshop up on it and I'm just trying to 
get used to doing that because I know it's easier. I know people say like it's better to use the iPad than it is to use anything else. But man, boy, is it easier when you've been doing it like one way. So you guys, what's the uh, outside of using like edit, you know, what is it? Edit and re redo or undo or whatnot. What's the what's the better way of using that? Using this or to make those type of transitions where I can go backwards without using the the mouse or the keyboard or something like that. Because like I said, I'm using the pencil and I'm using the iPad. And I mean, I guess I have to go to edit and undo to undo some things that I did or whatnot. But if I don't want to do that, what's the hot key for that? Or what's the command for that? Do you guys know? And if you do, just leave it in the comment section below. That's definitely helping me out. Um, make a selection real quick and then I want to dump this in white and then command D uh, and then let's look at it real quick so kind of feel like I might have went a little too far with this one right here so let me see if I can bring that in a little bit more and you know what now that I look at it like when you're when you're going out you know it hits this point right here and with that point like the thumb it's kind of like curving out I guess you can see like it's thumb part the top portion of your thumb curves that way in so I need to kind of create that as well so I'm gonna leave that where it is I'm probably gonna fix up some of the edges real quick but um that's pretty much good so I think I'm happy with that I'm gonna go ahead and just fix these edges though so with the black brush come in right here I just Fix that is that part of here like you know, I think we can drop this down like right here like this and then I'm also going to use the pen tool again right here to get that going Nope, I missed that point right there. Just kind of curve it out like that and then control click and make a selection. Yes, and then dump white into it right here. Dump white into it a few times actually. Cool. So I have that and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna make that point where it actually kind of like curves out just a little bit. But for right now, I'm gonna move on to the next portion, which is these top portions of the fingers that needs to come out. Whoop, did it again. Need to click this one. I need to label. So labeling would be awesome. And I know I'm not doing a good job of that because I don't label sometimes. I like to label, but I don't. And that's kind of a bad habit to get into. So if there's anybody that's a new designer and they're using like Photoshop or anything like that, you guys are using Photoshop, definitely label what you got going on. It makes everything so much more smoother. As a matter of fact, that's kind of what they're asking in like job interviews. Like when they say, do you understand the process of like working non-destructively and stuff like that? Or sometimes on like the application, they'll say, do you know how to, uh, wait, they'll call it workflow. But basically what they're saying is like your process. Do you understand process? Do you understand? Wait, so they'll say like, do you understand process? Which is like from sketch to like finished product. Okay. And then within that asset building and stuff like that. So if they're saying something like asset building, so yeah, your sketches are part of your asset building and stuff like that. But another good portion is labeling the stuff that you got. So um, let's just say I was building like a website or something like that. Um, and frame one was supposed to be like the header or something like that or this so basically that's what they're asked they're saying like make sure you just label this stuff so the person that you pass off the design to understands what you were trying to go for okay um, and that's pretty much it on that I've had that happen to me at a job one time where I didn't understand what they were saying if you can say I didn't like that one I don't know why I messed that up um, I didn't like I didn't know what they were saying when they were saying build the assets and I thought I was pretty much doing the design work for real but 
I really wasn't. I was. It's a huge disservice when you're not um, building your assets out right. Now, because I'm doing this independently, and you know nobody's behind my back, you know, yelling at me, telling me not to do it like this or anything like that. I have room to make these mistakes, but as you can see, it's definitely a problem when you make these mistakes and you're trying to fix it on your own. Now I have a computer issue right now, like this computer uses a lot of GPU and stuff like that, so, uh, which is for, for all you guys that aren't, you know, tech savvy, it stands for graphic power engine, or unit, sorry, graphic power unit. And what happens is that the graphics power basically feeds off of like animations for your computer. And what happens is once you use it a lot, you know, it just gets slower you know like once you use it up like Macs are really bad for that like once you use it up it's kind of like slower so and I have a lot of things running in the background and stuff like that that uses graphic power in using the graphic power unit you know what I'm saying so I'm just trying to make this a little bit smoother I also have like this ghosting right here which is not cool um, I'm probably gonna use just use the computer so I'm used to just doing it like that anyways to get that going so I'm gonna make this a little bit more smoother a little smoother transition right here and once I get that down I'll be able to move to like the other finger and then we'll move into like phase two of this which is the animation portion so phase one is to pretty much build out like your frames and then phase two is just to put in an animation and I try to do this as much as I can on like my tutorials for my gifts and stuff like that. Which I might make this into a GIF because you know it is kind of in Photoshop. But that's the that's the process. So first build out your assets, you know, and then kind of put it together in the animation. So and it's that's basic animation, I guess you can say. I'm not an animator or anything like that. I wouldn't consider myself an animator more than a person that just knows how to do some stuff in Photoshop. I mean, I do know how to do After Effects stuff, and if you guys wanna see some After Effects tutorials, you know, just leave it in there. I just feel like, and I've been watching things like, I've been watching uh, channels like Future and stuff like that, and one thing that they, you know, kinda hammer home, or at least, is, so basically their thing is, yeah, I can teach you how to do this stuff, you know, but I'm more so along the lines wants to te want to teach you strategy, you know. So instead of me just teaching you how to do something in After Effects, I want to at least show you guys why it's relevant and, you know, what you can do going forward with it. Because, I mean, just for you to be somebody who can learn something from my channel from After Effects with no strategy, then you're going to put it together and you're going to put it in something that, you know, doesn't make sense. And they're going to be like, so why did you do this? You know, I watched a lot of like music videos that do that, you know, they have like a cool effect and it's really cool, but it doesn't relate to the song. It doesn't relate to the story of like, you know, the music video, like it doesn't relate to the video. It doesn't re relate to the actual song or anything like that. And uh, it just, you know gets you kind of off you're like that's really cool but why you know so that's something to think about i was talking to a friend about that not too long ago and he was showing me uh little yachty lil yachty and i was like yeah lil yachty got some cool you know i guess effects in his videos but it doesn't make sense you know like i don't understand why he did it it's just pretty cool so He'll ask me all the time, like, can you do this? Can you do that? Like, I definitely want to learn how to do this, you know, and I think you're the man that can teach me to do it. And yeah, yeah, I'll teach you anything that you want to learn. But my thing is, if I'm teaching you something, how are you going to apply it? Like, is it just going to be for your video? You know what I'm saying? Which is not a problem. It's just, what's the, what's the real strategy to learning this, you know, like, you can mess around in After Effects and learn all types of things. So I can teach you like the basics of stuff in there. Like, you know, this is how you form something or this is how you, uh, this is how you do like simple turn animations. And this is how you do opacity drops and stuff like that. Or, you know, this is, uh, 
pretty much how you do transformations and this is you know this is pretty much how you do things like just how you use the 3d camera or all that type of stuff but the real the real bulk of the matter is why are you using it you know like what's the real reason why you're using it because if it doesn't make sense for you to use then it's kind of like well yeah i taught you then it because it's like yeah it's almost like school let's just say like that like it becomes school okay and nobody wants to feel like they're taking a test you know what i'm saying like you don't want to feel like you're taking a test when you're learning when you want to learn how to do something and it's not going to be like um i guess i can say it's not going to be like something that you're not going to use like math you're going to use math up until a certain point but you're not going to use trigonometry you know what i'm saying like you're not going to use pythagorean theorem you know all the time in life especially you know it's just kind of like useless math but i mean i guess i'm not gonna say math is useless maybe the pythagorean theorem is good somewhere but the average person is not going to use pythagorean theorem that's what i'm saying and i'm going to show you an effect but the average person is not going to need that effect you know if i show you something like a star stream or something like that like this is how you do a star stream for something that's unrelated like let's just say for a stapler commercial so you got a stapler commercial and you're using star streams on it well that doesn't what is that what is that answering let's just say that like what is it answering so you don't want to feel like that you know i don't want to feel like that either or i don't want to make you guys feel like that so that's the reason why i don't give those type of tutorials um so yeah i got this down and i've just got to transform this in just a little bit from here like that there's a thousand I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and close that up by saying and I know I didn't want to do that but I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go ahead and close this up by saying like there's a thousand one different channels out here that do that you know that show you pointless animations like the, the animation is cool I'm not trying to say that it's not you know but there's a thousand one different animation or animators out here showing you animations that you can replicate and you know if that's something that you want to get into then by all means go ahead and do it just kind of be mindful that you know what they're teaching you is basically the base should be the basics and not the effect That looks pretty good. I think that looks good. I, I think I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going to send this on Instagram. So hopefully you guys will follow me on Instagram. It's uh, at Instagram at I am loyal. I'll have that somewhere down here somewhere. I have that somewhere in the video where you guys can see it and you can follow me on there. I post up amazing stuff there. I'm also getting back into my Twitter, which is also I am loyal. So um, you guys are following me all the time updates you'll know when my stuff come out almost all the time i'm also making a, a tomb alert page for this company which will be in the background of the uh i guess it'll be in the background so you can do like gif animations in the background so i thought about it and i'll do it so um that will be in the background as well but uh let me go ahead and build this out so i'm gonna go ahead and save this first and then build this out so this portion right now is like a third step all right which is kind of like a hit number two from one to two but there's kind of like a step in between that that you all should kind of like be mindful of which is called like the audit section which is pretty much where you go through and you kind of make sure that you have clean animations going through so i feel like i missed the part like right here so i'm gonna go ahead and circle it and then just kind of looking through just to see if there's any con inconsistencies like i feel like everything here is flowing pretty well and that's the final animation which doesn't really mean anything so i think this one right here in frame one needs to be fixed so i'm going to go ahead and click auto select and then tap on that and then turn off auto select and then kind of fix that out kind of look at it kind of examine it that doesn't look bad considering that you know i'm pulled a vector i pulled a vector from you know illustrator into i guess photoshop which is a raster spot that doesn't look bad even though it's kind of i guess there's pixels surrounding it 
but uh that looks pretty good the second portion looks cool too so yeah i think the audit is pretty much done also in this audit stage i definitely know that i can't use folders well i can but i can't really use folders in the animation portion so i have to turn all this stuff into a smart object and now that i got that i'm gonna move everything into the middle of everything so i'm just gonna go ahead and hold shift hit this and then um i guess this here click this and then put it all in the middle so like so uh, it didn't work out too well so i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of because i have the same animation well because the frames are kind of like the same in a way I can just kind of move all this into the middle like so and just kind of line it up like that i think that's pretty good right there and now that i got that all i have to do is go ahead and click create a video timeline and go for it now like i said this is pretty much what i've been doing on my youtube channel i don't i feel like i don't have to explain it anymore but you know you guys can definitely check those videos out I'm just gonna go ahead and raise this up to probably this much right here where I have five, you know, five frames, 10 frames, 15 frames. Everything is moving in a sequence of five. And let me see, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, so I can just go ahead and pull these out. I actually wanna rearrange this in a way that I guess stacks itself correctly where i don't have to do too much so um frame two so frame three i want everything to end at one full frame one full second of frames so i'm gonna move this frame over like so uh, probably having to stop here at 20 frames then i want to move this second frame over like so oops and then here at 10, I'm going to have to click here and hit this scissor. Okay, hitting that scissor creates a copy, but I can just delete the copy. And then I'm going to do it again for this one here. Hit the scissor, delete the copy. Whoop. Make sure I click on the copy and then delete it. And then right here at one frame, uh, hit that scissor again. And then delete that out. And then go here to color fill as well hit that scissor, delete the copy of the color fill, and then that's the animation. Hopefully this audit will say is pretty good. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool, it's choppy, I like it. I feel like it could be a little bit faster, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it smaller. I'm gonna bring the frames in just a little bit more, um, which means that it will go to, this will become five, that will go to the five and become 10 and that will go to the 10 and become 15. Yeah, so that's a whole lot better. Uh, the animation is a little shaky because I'm not all the way centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Actually, you know what? I think I like it like that because I don't feel like doing too much more on this like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it out, bring it like this. Now, I guess a good practice about animated logos is that the, the last frame actually has to last. So, um, yeah, this is cool and all. I should make it five seconds long. So I'm gonna keep this rolling. I'm actually gonna add an extra frame into it to, uh, to create that GIF. So it comes out and goes back in, but I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna export this one out. I'm gonna make a few changes real quick actually. Let me just do that instead of saying that. I'm gonna make some few changes. I'm gonna make a few changes on this last frame and I'm gonna kind of drag this frame out for a few seconds. That's what you kind of want for like your animated logo, okay? Um, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this out. Okay, so now that we got that one registered, we got that one pretty much rendered and ready to go. I need to go in and just kind of bring this color fill out to about right here. Uh, let's actually go back. Let me see. So if this the ending, 
to make it loop out basically i'm trying to i need to make this loop because you know that's the way that you give that's how you make gifts and the way that it's right now the way that it is right now it's not doing what i need it to do it's it's good and all you know i'm not gonna lie like that's pretty awesome but i need it to do that looping effect so and the only way that i'm gonna do that is to copy frame two and clip that out in a way that allows me to do that so i think right here we'll cut that out and then close that up and then it does a progressive opening close and this is the gift loop that you kind of want to put on like instagram or tumblr or something like that you know so this is pretty awesome i think this goes the way that i want it to go okay you guys so now i'm in final cut pro and actually i don't have a lot of space so this is gonna have to be something done fast but basically what i want to do here is just kind of you know extend this out some so as you can see already it's like not even a second long okay it's darn near half a second which is cool because i needed to have i need to have kind of a little fast animation but the problem here is that because it's not a second long there's it's not going to be memorable so i have to pretty much extend this out and the way that i would do this is just by holding alt and hitting f okay once i hold alt and hit f it creates like i don't know maybe a a few seconds out of like a little small slide or whatnot and that basically just becomes what i need so it holds itself out i can you know let that fade out into the skies now the thing is it has to be five seconds long like that's a kind of a rule of thumb so i'm gonna go ahead and make it five seconds and i guess delete out you know i guess that extra little small tab because it is just a picture frame i'm actually just gonna make this yeah exactly maybe uh, i'll just make it five seconds long and just keep it at that i don't want to be too different but five seconds long four seconds will pretty much make a uh, an animation i mean an animation but a cross dissolve and stuff like that but uh five four seconds and then a cross dissolve for a fifth second but that's pretty much it so that's pretty much all you need to do as far as like making a, an animated logo now this is pretty much cool to have and it's necessary i didn't really tell you guys why it's necessary and why i'm doing this but because i'm moving into like marketing and advertising for the next video that comes out next thursday um you need to have this together kind of i feel like you kind of need this to make that brand recognition okay you see this a lot on like buzzfeed and stuff like that where they animate their logos and all that stuff so you really need an animated logo especially if you're thinking about advertising your clothes outside of the pictures that you get from like websites or stuff like that um if you're thinking about making a commercial boom you have your animated logo okay uh so that's just something i wanted to put together for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you have any questions leave it in the comment section below if you're new to my channel and you just discovered me go ahead and give me a thumbs up like me subscribe to me hashtag bail me bro there's a bunch of stuff you know like i do this all the time and i actually invite you guys to just go through my channel and just check it out so i'm robert loyal and that's pretty much it so i'm gonna go ahead and close this one out so stay amazing stay creative but above all else stay awesome